Good day. In this training video, we'll continue our overview of the sales orders module of MOAB Advanced and the entering of sales orders for different order types. First, we'll look at entering a credit memo order type. Let's say that our customer, Industrial Supply, wants to return one of the two wireless solar keyboards we've entered into the system in a previous sales order video. For this, let's navigate to Sales Orders and from the Transactions section, select Sales Orders. Now, let's bring up the sales order previously raised for industrial supply for the two wireless keyboards. From this form, let's select the Actions toolbar and click on Copy Order. And in the dialog box, change the order type to CM for Credit Memo. Now, let's click OK. On selecting OK, a credit memo order type will be created based on our previous order. Let's change the quantity of the line item to 1. And let's save the changes. From the Actions drop-down list, select Prepare Invoice. We will be taken to the Invoices form now. From here, we can release the credit memo to update the general ledger. We'll do this from the Actions drop-down, Release. Upon release of the credit memo, the GL has been updated. And from the Financial Details tab, we can click on the Batch Number hyperlink to view the journal transactions, crediting our Accounts Receivable account and debiting our Income account. Next, we'll look at the return for credit order type. This differs from a credit memo in that a return for credit order type allows us to receive the product in one step and post the credit memo in another step, therefore posting a return receipt, which was not posted when we processed the credit memo order type. Let's say that we've received five tower cases back from our customer Border Books, who recently ordered 10 cases and for whom we entered a back order in a previous sales order video. So for this, let's navigate to Transactions, Sales Orders, and find the sales order for Border Books for the 10 tower cases. Once opened, let's click on the Actions drop-down and select Copy Order. This time, we'll change the order type to RC for Return for Credit and click on OK. On selecting OK, a Return for Credit order type will be created based on the previous order. On the line item, let's change the quantity to 5 and save the changes. Now, from the Actions drop-down, we'll have an option to create a receipt which was not available before when we processed a credit memo. So let's click on this option. A dialog box will open where we can specify shipment parameters. For now, we'll accept the defaults and click OK. Once we click OK, you'll notice that we'll go from the sales orders form to the shipments form. Note the operation of receipt here. Right, now we can confirm the shipment from the actions drop-down. Once the shipment has been confirmed, the Prepare Invoice option becomes available for selection from the Actions drop-down. So, let's select this option now to create our credit memo. To complete the transaction, from the Actions drop-down, let's select to release the credit memo. Once again, on the Financial Details tab of this form, we'll find the Batch hyperlink from where we will be able to view the journal transactions for this credit memo transaction. And finally today, we'll have a look at an invoice order type. Now, sometimes it might so happen that we need to directly invoice our customer without raising a sales order or creating a shipment first. To enter such a direct invoice, we'll make use of the IN sales order type. Let's navigate from the Sales Order menu to Transactions, Sales Orders and click on the plus icon to add a new sales order. So this time, we'll select the order type as IN Invoice from the drop-down list here. 
Now we can select our customer. Let's enter a customer order number and a description. We would like to check the stock levels in the different warehouses for stock items starting with CPU. So let's click on the Add Stock Item option from the Grid Toolbar. In the Inventory Lookup dialog box, let's enter CPU in the Inventory field. Now we'll be able to see the quantities available for the items across the different warehouses for all our CPU items. Let's select 8 of the CPU 00001 stock item from the Auckland branch and 4 of the CPU 00005 item also from the Auckland branch. Once selected, we can click on Add and Close. A quick review of the line items added to our Document Details tab will confirm correctness of our order. And once everything else looks good, we can go ahead and save the invoice order. To prepare the invoice, let's click on the Actions drop-down and select this option. We will now be taken to the Invoices form and from the Freight Details tab on this form, we can click on the Order Number hyperlink. The invoice sales order we've entered earlier will now display on screen. Back on the Invoices form, on the Financial Details tab, you'll notice that the batch for this transaction has not yet been generated. So, to update the general ledger with our invoice sales order transaction, from the Actions drop-down, let's select Release. Now, the Batch Number hyperlink will display on the Financial Details tab, and from here, we can view the journal transactions. And with this, we've come to the end of our overview of the different sales order types we'll cover in our MOB Advanced Training videos. Please let us know with your feedback and join us again for more as we explore MOB Advanced through our training videos. Thank you for watching.